so here we've got the wave equation, which is a PDE in the first line. C is a constant. You've got an initial displacement given in the second line uh, by some function, some suitable function h of x. You've got an initial velocity associated with the, um, the uh, wave. In this case, uh, u sub t at x comma zero is zero, so the, it's released from rest. And now we've got two extra pieces of information. Boundary conditions or side conditions. Okay. Now, so from a physical point of view, what, what do these side con conditions mean? It means that you've got a, a string of you know, a, a finite length and you've got the, clamp, the ends clamped or fixed. So the ends can't move around. Okay. So what will happen is, you know, you'll, you'll set your, your, your string or your wave in motion and things will uh, rebound and, 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 you know, you've got your, you've got your ends clamped. They, they, they cannot uh, be displaced. Now, the idea of this particular presentation is to show how you can use D'Alembert's solution to actually um, solve this this. Uh, sort of more constrained problem. Okay, so with, with D'Alembert's solution you essentially have these conditions but x is between you know negative infinity and infinity. Right? So you've got like an infinitely long string. Alright, so it's, it's very clever I, I've got to say, very, very clever to um, be able to use and apply D'Alembert's solution to this particular problem. Okay. All right. So how do we do it? So we'll come back to that. So just something quickly about D'Alembert's solution. Okay. So let's consider the related problem. Now, essentially we're going to relate big H to little h. But let, let's just consider the second problem independently of the first for now. Okay? It can be shown that D'Alembert's solution To this second problem is the following. Okay, in fact, we verified, uh, sorry, we verified that in another video, another presentation, where f and g are just twice differentiable functions. Now, in fact, you can go a bit further and actually say that uh, you can relate these two functions with the initial displacement. Okay? Okay, well, how do you do that? Well, don't you also have an integral now? No, because the. the yeah, it, we would have you, you would, if, if, that, if that was a function, yeah. definitely. Yeah, if that, if that was non-zero, yeah, you, you'd definitely have a, 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 an integral. Okay. So, so how do you come up with um, with this? Well, essentially, you use these two conditions. Okay. So, um, the first condition, it'll be h of x equals f of x plus g of x. Okay. And the second condition will be something like. Um, uh, cf dash of x minus cg dash of x equals zero. And if you differentiate the one involving h of x, then you can actually go through and determine uh, f in terms of big H and g in terms of big H. Okay? 
All right, so how can we use this to actually solve the original problem? Well, this initial pluck or initial displacement is only defined on this interval, whereas this is defined on the whole real line. So what we're going to do here is actually extend little h to the whole real line, but in a very clever way. Okay, we're going to extend little h as, a, as an odd periodic function. Okay, you might think, well, why? What, what, why do you want it? What, why that? Why not something else? Why not an even function? Why something like that at all? Well, it'll become clear why these things work as we actually verify um, um, that these... Essentially, it's about verifying that these two conditions hold. Okay, and you'll, you'll see where we use the, the um, concept of periodicity with period 2L and the oddness. Okay, so that's our goal. Okay, a periodic uh, and odd function. So we're going to define this function here and relate it to. So, so big H is going to be the odd periodic extension of little h. Okay. Then we already know that this problem has a solution of this form. Okay? So what we've done is we've taken something that's not quite defined, or this thing that, that, that's not quite defined on the uh, whole uh, 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 the real x, we've extended its domain of definition in a certain way. And we know that, that that problem has a has a solution of this form. Okay, so now what we what we want to do, we, we notice we haven't used whether whether you know, any periodicity or any oddness of this extension yet. The oddness and the periodicity comes in with satisfying these conditions, the side conditions or the boundary conditions. Okay. Oh, 2L, yeah, thank you. So that's, that's 2L. I've got, I've got Fourier series on the brain. Okay, so it's not, not 2 pi, sorry, 2L here. Thank you. Okay, 2L. Yeah, Fourier series with uh, 2 pi periodicity. <laughs> They're a hard thing to ignore. Okay, so 2L, thank you for that. Then we know this problem... has a solution and the solution say is in double star form of form double star okay so now what we want to do is actually show that if our periodic extension our periodic extension our odd extension essentially gives us these the, the boundary conditions the zero site conditions Okay, so as a final step, so I'm going to call these side conditions. So let's call, let's make that S, S for side condition. Okay, because what that means is, it means that the solution of this form must satisfy the original problem, or, you know, for x between 0 and, and, and l and all t positive, or non-negative. Okay? Alright. So. So 
So using this, where h is the odd periodic extension, uh, big H is the odd periodic extension of, of little h, let's uh, show that this equals zero. Okay, so if you go in and plug in x equals zero, you'll get the following. Now what we want, want is these terms to disappear, cancel each other out. And we know they do because we've assumed that big H is odd. Okay? So what do we get here? We get zero. Nice. So in other words, this solution satisfies the left side condition, if you like. What about the other side condition? Well, we've used the oddness. We haven't used the periodicity yet. So if I go back to double star and plug in x equals capital L, I'll get something like this. Now, we want these two things to cancel each other out in some sense. So how do we do that? Well, H is 2 pi periodic, big H. So so certainly this is true. And this is the negative of that. So if I use the oddness, I get the following. So our, our, our other side condition is satisfied. So what this means is that, I mean, if you, you know, uh, here, here I sort of said, oh, let's make it periodic and odd. If you worked on these things, then you, sh you should be able to come up with those things. Okay, you'd say, okay, well, in order for this to, to, to be zero, if I assume that it's an odd periodic extension, then I get what I want. Okay, so, hence, Double star solves the original problem. Okay, so this problem here, where H is the odd 2L periodic extension of H to the real line. 